bring in Reggie Miller, who joins us from the bubble. How long did it take you to pronounce Giannis Adetokounmpo? Oh, wow. I don't know if I still have it down. <laughs> Giannis Antetokounmpo, and it's Bo, not Po. People don't understand that, that it's Bo, not Po. Thank you, Reg. Reg will be on the call. Mavs Suns at 4 Eastern, Blazers Nets at 9 Eastern on TNT. So uh, double duty here. Should we have bubble awards? I think it's fun. I mean, we're in unique times. This is a, a different situation. And certainly, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, just to highlight, again, some teams and some players have played a little bit harder than others. Some are still getting going, but it's it's fun. It's catchy. Okay. Why not? Where would you showcase your bubble award? If I came into your house and you had won <laughs> a bubble award, Reg, I would say, oh, come here. I would have opened up my, my bottom sock drawer, <laughs> okay. pulled it out, and like, hey, I was MVP of the bubble, you know, back in 2020. I think we should just call it uh, POTB, player of the bubble. Um, is it, well, who's your pick? Damian Lillard, uh, TJ Warren for a little while there was the Jordan of the bubble. So who is the oh, MVP? Uh, are you going with uh, bubble MVP yeah. right now? Yeah. I, I probably would go – Damian Lillard has been fantastic, incredible numbers, what he's doing to push them probably to that A spot. I have to go with Devin Booker. Oh. I, I mean, look, I, as great as, uh, you know, 7-0 and for the Phoenix Suns, no one expected them to be on this run and in contention yeah. to possibly – they still can get that A spot, but I still think they can get that nice spot – and have those playing games, I think it's – you can't go wrong between Lillard and Booker. I give this very slight, very slight edge to Devin Booker just because right now they are the only undefeated team uh, in the bubble, and they have a shot of actually, you know, playing for those playing games in the Western Conference. And then we have Suns and Blazers on Saturday? If. If, okay. it, if it is those two, oh. Phoenix, or excuse me, uh, Memphis is still in play, and San Antonio Spurs are okay. still in play. So it's going to come down to tonight's games. Three of those teams are on our network, San Antonio, obviously Phoenix, we mentioned, and Portland. Portland mm. plays uh, Brooklyn in the nightcap. The Greek freak gets suspended for one game for headbutting Mo Wagner. What did you make of that? Well, it's convenient that he gets one game. He wasn't going to play tonight's game anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if the playoffs started tomorrow, is the Greek freak suspended for that first game? Yeah, I still think he would. Okay, been okay, yeah, he right. still did. Okay, I, I just thought maybe they were going to give him two games, and then he would have been missed game one of the first round. But it's a one game suspension. I get it. I've been there. I've been headbutted before, so I understand it. Wait, I mean, but didn't you headbutt? No, I was headbutted by John Starks. Oh. I was headbutted by John Stark. And, and I reacted the same way Wagner did. You know, you act like you're like been shot out of the canyon. <laughs> you know, you act, oh my God. What has happened to me? Lordy. Oh, but uh, yeah, it wasn't that hard of a and actually more of his fro got Wagner than anything else. But I thought, oh, okay. So Starks is the one who hit you. Okay. He had butted me okay. and got thrown out. Okay. Yes. You should have been a theater major at UCLA. The way you played? You got to – look, I, look at me. I'm not the biggest of guys. You've got to be able to use a little bit of everything. I so um, I wouldn't necessarily, as you say, it wasn't flopping, Theodore. I was acting. I know. <laughs> acting. But it helped you. But I'm, how frustrated did people get, players get because you were flailing a little bit or acting a little bit and getting calls? Uh, very frustrated. And I think that's where the trash talking kind of came in because once I would get the call and they're over there griping to the official and then they would come to me like, you know, man up. And then I would kind of whisper things back to them. And that's how a lot of these like little – in-game rivalries kind of evolve is during those type of interactions or dramatic acting, as I call them. Did Jordan get suspended for trying to gouge your eyes out? 
No. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, okay. I was suspended one game. You're talking about the big fight we had. I was suspended I, one game. I don't know if that was a big fight. That wasn't a big fight. Yeah, you're right. It could have. <laughs> that was an undercard. That wasn't a fight. It, it could have uh, It could have escalated. No, I got suspended a game. He got suspended, I believe, three games oh, for that. Okay. But if you remember, I got thrown out of that game. He got to continue that game in Market Square in Indiana. Wow. That's the power of Jordan. Yeah. Uh, we're talking to Reggie Miller, the Hall of Famer. He's got two games today, Mavs Suns at 4 Eastern and Blazers Nets at 9 Eastern on uh, TNT. I'm just looking at the numbers here. I try not to be uh, somebody who overreacts, but I'm just looking at the raw numbers with the Lakers. Not a good field goal percentage from two-point range, certainly three-point range here. And you could be walking right into the Portland Trail Blazers or Phoenix Suns here. Do, how much concern do you have with the Lakers now that we're winding down the regular season and the postseason starts next week? I will say this. If Kyle Kuzma can play like he played against the Denver Nuggets when he hit the game winner and he is that third outlet, he is that third presence on the floor, I wouldn't be so worried. But again, the game of basketball, it's not a light switch. You can't turn it on and turn it off. I like to see consistency. I like to see a team having a rhythm and playing well as they're building up, as they're ramping up, getting ready for the playoffs. We have not seen that from the Lakers. Is it concerning? Yes. But at the end of the day, you still have LeBron and you still have Anthony Davis, who, by the way, has struggled as well in this bubble restart. So I would love to see a little bit more consistency in terms, as you mentioned, the numbers of shooting. But if they come out and if it's against Portland, if it's against Phoenix or whomever, Memphis, San Antonio in the first round, and they go four and one, this will be a mute point. But if they struggle, remember these teams that they potentially could be playing, every game has been a playoff game for them. So they're already playing at playoff level. It's not a light switch. If the shooting's not there, it could be a very long series for the Lakers. Yeah, that's what I wondered about. Let's say Portland gets in and every game has been a playoff game for them. At some point, you may run out of that energy that you have. Or, you know, can you go on a run because you've been playing at playoff level basketball there? That, that would be my big curiosity with no matter who the Lakers face, those teams are coming in scratching and clawing. Yeah, you, you're you wondering if they're going to run out of gas. Yeah. But I think for Portland, they have – I think they've been campaigning, especially uh, Damian Lillard. If you remember before this bubble restart, when they were questioning uh, who were they going to bring and were they going to have a shot at making the playoffs, Dame says, look, if we don't have a shot of making the playoffs, I'm just going to sit on the sideline and cheer my, my teammates on. I think that's why they formatted uh, what we're seeing right now. And the way he is playing, I don't see any letdown on his end. The thing that kind of concerns me, though, with the Portland Trailblazers is the health report and the injury to C.J. McCollum. I know he's having yeah. a back issue right now, and he's that other guy that puts so much pressure offensively on you. If he's not 100% healthy, um, I still believe Portland could upset the Lakers, but it diminishes their chances if he's not at 100%. Give me the other team that you would say keep an eye on, certainly if it's in the West or the East. Look, there's going to be some unbelievable first-round matchups. Um, we have, like, rivalry matchups. We've got Boston versus Philadelphia, uh, Al Horford versus his old team. We've got Jimmy Butler versus T.J. Warren, Miami versus uh, Indiana. How about CP3 getting a chance to go against – uh, James Harden and Russell Westbrook, Russ going against OKC's. A lot of history in these first-round matchups. Something that's going to be exciting to see. I mean, if there's a team that possibly could rise up. Again, I'm putting my chips with, with Portland because they're, Damian Lillard is playing on a different planet right now. And if guys continue to taunt him in the bubble, <laughs> I'm just telling you guys, he is not the one to do this with. A guy that has the ball 90% of the time with unlimited range and a purple light, you do not trash talk guys like that that can put 50 on you anytime they step on the floor. And he goes back-to-back, -back, though, 
over 50. That doesn't happen very often in NBA history. And these are all big games. I'm also curious, you know, we saw what happened with the Greek freak. We've seen some trash talking there. We've, you know, followed what Damian Lillard has been saying back and forth. The Clippers with what they were doing with Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. Are players starting to go a little stir crazy there in the bubble, Reg? I think so. And I think, I think it came out yesterday that, <laughs> oh, oh well, my goodness, we're going to be able to bring some family and friends in here pretty soon because I think they've been in isolation. Um, it's been them and 15 of their teammates and coaching and coaching staff and management. I think so. I think they're going a little stir crazy. And I think that's why they have kind of let up on the restrictions a little bit, being able to allowing, you know, family members and close friends, if you can uh, prove that they're a close friend, I, I think they're going to open up their restrictions. And I think that will kind of lessen the tension a little bit, but again, we're getting ready for playoffs and mm-hmm. usually come playoff times. That's when guys are probably at their moodiest. So um, I don't know. I think that maybe they're going a little stir crazy, but it's fun to watch. I'll tell you that. Do you think the NBA adopts this play in scenario as we move forward when we leave the bubble? I, I think if, if there is no vaccine in the near future, uh, I think we could have multiple bubbles next year. I think we can have a, a, an East Coast bubble and a West Coast bubble. No, the, the play in, you know, what we're, we're seeing. Oh, I in like the West. that. Okay. I like it. The only disadvantage I think it is, it's for the number one seed because you don't know who, you can't prepare and you don't know who you're going to play for. But if you're the number one seed, do you really care who the eighth spot? You shouldn't be worrying about the eighth spot if you're the number one seed. I think that's the only disadvantage. But it gives a little bit of a feel towards like the, the March Madness. You got to play yourself in. It gives teams an, an actual shot of competing. If I look at, you know, people want to look at this, uh, whoever wins is, is there an asterisk attached to it. And I said, yeah, there might be because of the degree of difficulty is harder than probably any other year that we've had in NBA history. A, a bonus asterisk is what you get. The Lakers with no home court advantage. Let's say they would face Portland, mm-hmm. Rockets, Clippers, and then let's say the Bucks. I don't know if you can find a team in NBA Thanks. history that has gone through something like that and not had home court advantage. You throw that in there as well. That's why I have no problem saying anybody who wins a title, I'll give you one and a half titles. This w- Whoever wins this championship will have won it. All the points that you just mentioned, you're going to be going through all the tough teams. And I, I cannot stress this enough. Because being in these uh, arenas and with no fans and these teams manufacturing their own energy, because uh, there's been a tendency, and to me, the games have been fantastic. They've been close. They've been competitive. And I'll give all the guys credit because for the most part, they came back in shape. But they have had to find motivation in other ways. And if you can win this championship, with everything that's factored in, um, you're right. It's an asterisk. It's an asterisk on the good side because you will have actually had to go out and win it. Well, it's going to be fun. I, I, I don't want to have preferential treatment or say I'm rooting for somebody, but if you said the Suns and the Blazers were going to be playing against one another, I would be... Or a plan? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Devin Booker versus Damian Lillard. That alone, that's a headliner for that playing game. Remember, whoever is eight only has to win one game. The ninth place team has to win two games to get that eighth spot. So I love it. It would be fantastic. I'm not rooting for anyone as well, but right now my two bubble MVPs are Damian Lillard and Devin Booker. Let them settle it in a play-in game, and right now they've set themselves up for that to happen. And I'm glad that we've been able to see some of these players that we wouldn't normally see. And Devin Booker is front and center because he's one of the great shooters in the NBA. You know, he's, he's one of the top five, you know, form his beautiful looking shot there. I don't know how good that team is. Uh, You know, Deandre Ayton and I don't know. I don't know if that's a full team, but it is an exciting team to watch because of him. And the same with Portland. They have the ingredients to be a formidable team. I just don't know if they're going to be able to put it all together in time to do that. So it should be a lot of fun. And I'm glad, you know, TJ Warren, some of these other players you wouldn't normally see right. are, uh, are playing, uh, you know, some good basketball. And we're getting an opportunity to witness that. It's great to talk to you. Have fun uh, this afternoon and tonight. 
I, I appreciate it. And I'm a little upset. I, I'm with you. I, I woke up grumpy the last couple of days. Yeah. We, uh, we got robbed. Yeah. We got robbed. I consider myself the fifth Danette. And um, look, I give you a lot of credit. Your reaction was great. But trust me, if I would have been with you guys in front of that camera, I would be like, this is bull. <laughs> we, this is some bull. Easy. We were robbed. Easy. Where's our sports <laughs> Emmy? You're lucky. You're lucky I wasn't with you guys. That would pretty much guarantee we wouldn't have a shot at next year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, that's why yeah. they haven't given it yeah. to us. Yes. But you know what? If we had won, you would have gotten a sports Emmy. Well, I would have gotten, I would have made sure that you got a sports Emmy because you're family. I'm always honored to be in your guys' presence again. I always tell people, they always ask, you know, how's Theodore and how are the Danettes? I'm like, I am a fifth Danette. I'm an adopted <laughs> child. I'm part of the family. <laughs> Thank you, Reg. Appreciate it, guys. Love you. That's uh, Reggie Aloysius Miller, Jr. the third. He's got a uh, doubleheader today.